What's up, people? I'd like to welcome you to the fifth episode of the DJ Prophecy Show. So the topic of uh, today's show is basically the state of the DJ industry. Okay? Now, uh, as many of you probably may know, I am from the 90s era of DJing, okay? I began DJing in 1998. That's when I first got my equipment. That's when I first started collecting vinyl and practicing and becoming a DJ, okay? So besides starting in, in 1998, my entire mind frame, even before I, I started as a DJ, was having a lot to do with the 90s era of uh, music and not only the 90s but also the 80s and some of the 70s late 70s to be more exact um, so this particular topic okay the state of the DJ industry okay it, it's it deals with a lot of different issues okay uh, one of the issues is equipment and what it means to be a DJ okay so for for many years for at least 30 years okay a DJ whether you were spinning at a, at a disco in the late 70s or you were spinning at a block party in the Bronx projects or you were spinning at a club you know in the late 80s or throughout the 90s or you were rocking a house party you know if you were spinning street music such as hip-hop uh, or dance music such as uh, house music or even reggae dance hall whatever whatever it was okay you were using the standard equipment which is what I have behind me right here what you see here are two technique 1200s in this case more specifically these are the 1210 models okay an update on the 1210 uh, and, and a mixer and of course a microphone which uh, you probably can see and over here is a crate of records actual records these are 12 inch records okay so for at least 30 years this here was the standard setup to be a DJ alright and another thing I like to mention is that when someone says DJ, what comes to my mind at least is something to the effect of a DJ Premier or a DJ Stretch Armstrong or a DJ Funk Master Flex or a DJ Tony Touch. Okay, this is what pops into my mind. Jam Master J, Mix Master Mike, right? And of course, all of these legendary DJs, not to mention Grandmaster Flash, uh, you know, and, and all these other legendary DJs, they all use this setup or something very close to this, okay? The Techniques 1200 was the standard for at least 30 years. And that, that kind of brings me into what I'm trying to say. The state of the DJ industry is, excuse my language, but in my opinion, is fucked up, okay? It's really, really fucked up. And you may ask why I say that. The reason I say that is for many different reasons. And, and I'd like you to understand that I'm not trying to go at anybody or you know, try to force my opinion onto anybody or, you know, try to diss anybody or anything like that. That's not what I'm trying to do. 
So for this show, I'm just going to go through my feelings and my ideas and how I perceive the industry in 2016. We're currently in November of 2016, okay? So as I mentioned, I'm from the 90s era, okay? I am a DJ, and to this day, I have still not adopted uh, what many quote-unquote DJs are using these days, which is a controller, a laptop, Serato, tractor, and, and these types of things. Now, one of the reasons I say that the, the industry is in such poor shape is because these days, the market is so saturated. You have all these people calling, calling themselves DJs, okay? And that really brings down the quality, okay? And, and what has occurred, in my opinion, is that DJ equipment manufacturers such as Newmark, Vestax, Gemini, and the others, they have profited and they have made millions and billions of dollars at the expense of the true DJ culture, okay? Because... In my opinion, not everybody should be a DJ. Not all these people should be calling themselves DJs. And not all of these people are even, in my opinion, DJs. And this is not just the way I feel. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way, okay? And no, I'm not trying to diss people and I'm not trying to say, no, you shouldn't go out there and do what you do and call yourself a DJ and learn and, and progress and, and do your thing. By all means, do your thing, but I'm just venting some of my feelings, and I know some, some of the feelings that a lot of DJs, and not only DJs, but people in general, okay, music enthusiasts, fans of DJs and DJ culture and DJ history and DJs mixing and scratching, as they know it, you know, a lot of people are seeing what I'm seeing, okay? So, back to what I was saying, for at least 30 years, the aesthetic, the appearance, the visual of a DJ is someone standing behind a set similar to this and uh, mixing and scratching, rocking a party, and doing their thing. However, these days, a lot of people are using laptops and controllers and software and all this other shit. Excuse my language, but all this other shit, right? And that's fucking up the game, okay? Because, you know, for example, back in the 90s, it was really difficult to become a DJ. You had to get the right equipment, which is what you see behind me here. Then you had to collect all the music, and that was on vinyl. Vinyl. If you wanted to play a hot record, you had to have it on vinyl. If you wanted to be really uh, genuine and be considered the real deal and do it the real way. Okay? And that's been the case for at least 30 years. Now, both the music industry, meaning the record labels and all these equipment manufacturers and all these other people, okay? They've really uh, harmed, they've harmed the game in a major way, okay? Because they've unleashed all of this new technology which has really changed the perception of what a DJ is, okay? So... These days, you're seeing somebody standing up there with a laptop and, 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 and you know, it, it just, it doesn't look right, you know, in a lot of people's eyes. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. 
being an old school style DJ is not easy, okay? As a matter of fact, it's much harder, all right? Because number one, you have to carry a lot of crates of records, you have to take care of your records, you have to carry heavy turntables and all of this stuff, right? So I understand that, you know, carrying a laptop and a controller is far more convenient, all right? I understand that. And also, I'd like to mention that a lot of these big name DJs, such as Funkmaster Flex, Grandmaster Flash, excuse me, Grandmaster Flash, uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff, and a whole bunch of major professional veteran DJs, I also see these guys, you know, they, 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 they've... Uh, They've moved on to laptops and controllers and digital and all of this. So, I mean, it, it's really, it's really, it's really uh, something, you know, because it it, it 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 changes it changes a lot, you know, and you know, I mean, if that if 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 you're a DJ or if you're trying to be a DJ and you're using these types of equipment of course that's totally up to you personally I don't like it I don't like the laptop and I don't like the controller and I'll tell you why because when I came into into DJing you know I came in the real way I came in the correct way I came in the authentic way I came in in a way that a DJ is meant to come in all right in, in a respectable way I didn't come in there with a with you know I didn't take the easy way it is kind of uh, a way to look at it you know and a lot of DJs also came in like me the hard way and they had to learn on vinyl and I prefer vinyl over this new technology. It, it's just it, it feels better, it sounds better, and it's of course it's it's more authentic. I think a lot of people would agree on that. But I I personally don't like the laptop. I don't like the controller. I know a lot of real DJs which use vinyl and grew up on turntables and and the same basic setup that you see behind me. And, and you know they're great DJs and I totally respect them and they're professional and they're veterans and, and they've done vinyl you know for most of their career and all of that I could understand that and I could see I could understand that they don't want to carry all this heavy vinyl around and, and this heavy equipment that's understandable but uh, another problem is that is you know you've got all these other people out there claiming to be DJs and they're undercutting real DJs in the marketplace offering their services for like $30 an hour you know and to be honest with you much of the time the, the quality of the service is, is poor it's very bad you know uh, and so it makes real DJs look bad it makes our craft look bad it makes our industry look bad it just fucks up the whole game to be honest with you, um, why would somebody pay thirty dollars an hour for a shitty DJ when they when when the, when the alternative is paying anywhere from five hundred to two thousand dollars a gig for a real DJ for a quality DJ for you know a DJ who's going to bring an awesome event? Uh, for, for the client and, and his or her guests so that's where the shit gets fucked up you know um, of course the entire public they're not aware you know they're not informed on what is a DJ what is a real DJ you know a lot of people that call themselves DJs honestly are not fit for that title you know they don't know about DJing they, they haven't done it for a long time you know 
the, 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 uh, most of the time they, they, you know, they didn't start on vinyl and on real equipment and things like that. So that, that does cause a problem. And, and the next thing I want to get to is because is that um, it's not always the equipment, okay? And, and equ equipment, you can have the best equipment and all of the best vinyl and everything, and that doesn't make you a good DJ. What makes you a good DJ is that you know the music, uh, you're knowledgeable about the music, you could mix, you could scratch, you could rock a party, you could bring uh, quality entertainment. This is what matters. I mean, if you could do all that on a controller or on, on, on whatever, you know, that's fine. But again, using a laptop or using a controller I don't like it. I personally do not like it. You know, I, there's something about it. I, I just never uh, gravitated toward the laptop method of DJing or the controller or anything like that. I mean, I'm a vinyl. I'm a vinyl DJ. I'm from the '90s era. I specialize in old school urban and dance music. And I have a company which uh, specializes in the same. Okay, so I guess for for a DJ such as myself, it's pretty, you know, that that makes sense. You know, if you specialize in old school urban and dance, then you know vinyl would be pretty much the the best way to go at it. So, so I mean, I, th I guess you know, in my case, it works pretty well. Um, but that's just my feeling regarding uh, the newer t DJ technologies. I'm not a fan of the laptop or any of this new, newer stuff. Uh, but at the same time, you guys got to understand that somebody coming into the game in the late 2000s, you know, 2008 to 2016, around this time, there's no way that they could get, you know, the quote-unquote real equipment, you know, the techniques and all the vinyl and all of that stuff, because, you know, basically they're not from that time. They're not from the time that I'm from. I'm from the 90s, I'm from the 80s, I'm from the early 2000s, when this kind of DJing was prevalent, you know? This was, this was the, the, the main way to go at it, you know? Um, so a lot of these newer DJs, they have no choice but to go with the laptop and go with this uh, Serato and go with the uh, controllers and all this other stuff. It's understandable. I don't like it, but again, that that's up to them and that's up to their uh, clientele and whoever is going to be paying them for their services. Uh, I always like to stay true to, to, to what I like to refer to as the real, real DJ, okay? Which is the standard equipment, techniques, 1200 turntables, a mixer, and vinyl records, okay? Um... So that's just one of the things that I, I feel is, is, is a problem within the uh, DJ industry today. Um, another problem, like I mentioned, is the pricing. You know, if somebody wants to hire you for a gig, there's all these other quote-unquote DJs and DJ companies and, and stuff and not all of them are are uh, of the same caliber, you know? Let me give you an example. There are certain companies out there who specialize in events such as weddings and bar mitzvahs, okay? That's what they do, they know how to do it, do it well, they have all the latest music, top 40, they'll play whatever you want, 
country music, pop music, the latest rap music, you name it. They'll even play stuff from the 50s and the 60s. Anything you want, rock and roll, heavy metal, they'll play all of that. And they'll do your wedding, they'll do your bar mitzvah, they'll do anything you want. I'm not one of those DJs and neither is my organization. We specifically specialize in old school urban and dance music, okay? So you could check us out on Yelp, you could check out the website, trackmastersdj.com. We have a specific brand, okay? Our brand is the old school street, hip hop, dance, club sound, okay? That's what we do. We don't do weddings and we don't do bar mitzvahs because that's not what we specialize in. We don't do the uh, cutting of the cake and all that other stuff. In my opinion, it's corny and it's cheesy, okay? And when I came, when I became a DJ and when I wanted to become a DJ, it was never to do a wedding, it was never to do a bar mitzvah. I was trying to get on the radio and I was trying to get into the nightclubs, okay? To make a long story short, uh, you know, I ended up, uh, you know, kind of becoming an entrepreneur and uh, trying to create my own lane, so to speak, because uh, club DJs don't make a lot of money and neither do radio DJs, unfortunately. And that's, that's another thing that's really, uh, you know, messed up about the DJ industry. Club DJs and uh, radio DJs do not make a lot of money unless you're the big name. Unless you're a really big name, then you have your own show and all of that, and you get into the clubs real easy, and you get paid a lot of money, and you're successful. But for all the other guys, you could be the, the best DJ, all right? You could be really, really good, and you know, you can't get into the clubs. You can't get on the radio station. And even if you do, you're going to be getting paid next to nothing because that's the industry currently. The industry is a real mess, okay? There's a lot of politics involved. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of BS, you know, involved in the DJ industry, okay? So, Back to what I was saying about the weddings and the bar mitzvahs, okay? Uh, my organization, we don't specialize. We don't specialize in this weddings and bar mitzvahs. However, if our client understands that and still wants to hire us for their event to, to play them, you know, party music and old school party music and, and to just have a great, fun, entertaining atmosphere, yeah, we'll be, we'll be happy to do that for them and we'll provide them the best service uh, that we can. Uh, but, you know, that, that's where my company and my organization, we differ from the rest. You know, we want to stand out and we want to be different and we don't want to just follow the crowd. So that, that's what sets us apart from the others out there. Number one, we don't use a laptop, we don't use controllers, we don't play new music. You know, we have a specific brand, which is old school urban and dance music, party music, okay? Um, and it's not just parties that, that we'll do. We also will do like MC rap battle competitions, b-boy, b-girl, uh, battle competitions, we'll do hot body contests and uh, stuff of that sort. Uh, so it's not just parties, we also do educational uh, type events where we explain, you know, the history of the DJ and stuff like that and what, you know, what the DJ has to do with hip hop and hip hop culture and hip hop history and we do that kind of stuff as well. 
Um, yeah, so the industry is, is really in disarray, if you ask me. Uh, I wish that DJ equipment manufacturers such as Newmark, Gemini, Vistax, and all of these uh, companies, they would really focus on the real DJ and the real DJ art form, meaning turntables and uh, authentic DJing, okay? And that, that, also, that also drags in uh, the music industry because the music industry has not only committed suicide against their own uh, business interests by by you know instead of instead of putting out uh, mainly physical media such as uh, vinyl records and CDs and so forth you know their main their main method of uh, music distribution has become the MP3 file and digital files and stuff like this right so. I wish that they would stop that, excuse me, and go back to physical media, uh, namely uh, vinyl and CDs, because, I mean, what was wrong? What, what was the problem that the music industry had to drop, to a large extent, vinyl records and CDs? Vinyl was fine for the DJ because... It had a great sound, it, it was awesome, it was sexy, it was wonderful, it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. I mean, sure, it was, it was heavy and you had to carry some crates. But, I mean, that, that, goes, that goes with the territory. That goes, I mean, for example, can you, be, can you be a cook without pots and pans and having a freezer and a fridge full of food and a stove and all the other shit that goes with uh, being a cook? Or, you know, can you be... Uh, a, a repairman w without having all the necessary tools and a van and all types of tools uh, and, and all you know whatever goes along with that uh, line of work so I mean being a DJ should mean you know having to carry the required equipment you know the vinyl and all of this stuff so that's why the industry is screwed up because now everybody with a laptop, everybody with a controller is calling themselves a DJ. And I mean, unless you're somebody like a DJ Jazzy Jeff or a Funk Master Flex or a Tony Touch or somebody like this, what gives you the right to call yourself a DJ? Not everybody should be a DJ. Not everybody should have the title of DJ, you know? I started DJing and I got my equipment back in 1998, all right? And even before that time, since about 1989, okay, I, I, I had been really studying music, hip-hop, Miami Bass and Booty, uh, freestyle, reggae, dance hall, classic dance music, dance music, a whole bunch of genres, you know? And then it just... You know, it snowballed and it got to the point where, you know, I was able to get the equipment and it was really difficult, but, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to get the equipment, professional DJ equipment. And then from that point, I started collecting vinyl, vinyl in 1998, you know, my first three records after I got my equipment were the Notorious B.I.G., uh, One More Chance Remix, 12-inch, DMX, Get At Me Dog, 12-inch, and an LP, uh, The Battle for Rap Supremacy, KRS-One versus MC Shan. You know, those were my fr first three records. Before then, I had no uh, records, I had no experience with vinyl, you know, it was totally new to me, but I wanted to get into the DJ craft, into the DJ line of work, into the DJ culture. I loved the DJ culture. I would hear all these great DJs, you know, on Miami radio, uh, on mixtapes coming out of New York, 
uh, at clubs in Miami. So I really wanted to be a part of that in the sense that I wanted to be that guy that was mixing great music and scratching and mixing and blending and getting on the mic and rocking the party, you know, throwing down on the radio in the club and all of this. I wanted to be that guy. And so it was a real, it was tough. It was not easy. I couldn't just go get a laptop, get a few files and call myself a DJ. No, I had to know a lot about the music. I had to practice my ass off. I had to go find records from all over the place. It was really, really difficult. It was not easy, you know? And even, even today, let's say someone goes and buys a controller or a laptop or both, okay? Does that person understand DJ history and DJ culture going back all the way to the modern uh, you know, timeline of, uh, of this DJ uh, field, you know, I don't think so. I mean, they're, they're most likely uh, just grabbing the latest music and calling themselves a DJ, right? So th that's where kind of I have an issue and I know a lot of other people uh, have an issue with that but at the same time you know I guess that's that's okay since these are the younger generation and they're the new generation and they don't really you know know about the 90s or the 80s or the late 70s music right and so the they're DJs, they're, they're the new generation of DJs. They're not the DJs as uh, maybe you or somebody else from my era uh, of music and DJing w w would understand what a DJ is. Because when someone says DJ to me, automatically I think of somebody like Funkmaster Flex or Tony Touch, all right? But these days, okay, for the younger generation, when they say DJ, what might come to mind is somebody using a laptop playing the latest music or something like that. So that's, that's where you have uh, basically the purest DJs on one side and then you have the new generation of people calling themselves DJs, all right? So th th this, is, this is kind of, uh, you know, kind of what, what some might consider uh, is messing up, you know, the DJ culture and uh, the industry and things like that. Personally, okay, I don't ever want to stop somebody from doing something they like. If you like using a laptop and especially if you're not even, you know, messing with the older uh, styles of music from like the 90s, early 2000s, the 80s, late 70s, if you're mainly doing new stuff, new music, then I guess that's that, that, that makes it all the better because I guess these days uh, you would need that type of setup for the newer music because uh, record companies are, are pressing far fewer vinyl than they used to, you know, years back. So although from what I hear vinyl is making a comeback and vinyl sales have uh, increased uh, in the last few years, That, that kind of ties into what I'm trying to say is that, you know, quote unquote, real DJs and genuine DJs that use this type of setup and use actual vinyl are very, are in the minority these days. I mean, if, if this were the 90s and the early 2000s and the 80s and the late 70s, the, the, you know, this type of DJing 
would be the majority. The majority of people would be using this. And, you know, to this day, I'm sure there's a lot of DJs who use this setup. And it's not only me. You know, I'm not, I'm not you know, uh, the, only, the only DJ still using vinyl these days. I, I assure you. I use vinyl because, number one, I enjoy it. Number two, it's, uh, historically speaking, this is the real original way of DJing, okay? Uh, and, I mean, a, a, a lot of clients, they, 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 they would probably prefer this type of DJing over some, you know, uh, some somebody showing up with a DJ, uh, pardon me, w w with you know a laptop or a controller because there is a difference. I mean, do you want authentic DJing, so to speak, or are you looking for just a cheap alternative? Because you know, I I'm not trying to you know diss anybody or be politically incorrect or anything, but. That's kind of what it boils, boil, bleh, excuse me, boils down to these days, right? Either you're going to pay more for an authentic DJ service, or you're going to be cheap and, and hire one of these instant DJs or one of these really bad DJs who are going to show up with really cheap equip, equipment and a really awful service. You're going to pay them, what, $30 an hour? They're going to provide uh, shitty service, and then they're going to leave. But then, you know, you do get what you pay for, right? So that, 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 that's basically uh, how that works. But uh, I really wish that uh, record companies, the music industry, as well as... Um, DJ equipment uh, manufacturers would really focus on DJing as as it has been for for much of its history, you know, which is using this type of setup and real vinyl. Another thing I'd like to mention is that. Let me gather my thoughts. I was going to mention something and I forgot. I was going to get into the, the quality of music these days and how it's not it's not as good as it used to be. Am I the only one that feels this way? That, you know, music from the 80s, the 90s, and early 2000s is in many ways superior to the music from that point to now? I personally don't like it. You know, I, I don't want to come out and say, you know, uh, anything, anything, anything too bad about it. But, uh, you know, the industry, the industry is much different than it was uh, uh, back in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. See, a lot has changed. You know what I mean? So much has changed. And in many respects, it's not for the better, you know? Um, so I don't know, guys. I mean, tell me, no, uh, excuse me, let me know how you feel about the matter. 
again, I, I'm not trying to diss anyone. I'm not trying to, you know, come at anyone the wrong way. Just giving you my opinion and, and how I see things. So hopefully, hopefully things will change, you know, uh, for the better. But as for right now, the industry looks very bad uh, in, in many ways. Um, I was going to say some other stuff, but to be honest with you guys, I, I just forgot and I'm trying to think of, of what it was that I was going to say. Um, I'll probably remember what it what it was and I'll I'll come back to it in a future episode. Uh, but for now I'm gonna sign off. This is DJ Prophecy. This was the DJ Prophecy show. I thank you for watching and have a good night.